the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. This morning in the epistle reading, we heard about Abraham and the fact that he had two sons. And I hope that uh, you know a little bit about the story of Abraham and Sarah, because it's important for us to, to think about, to know about, as we think about the commemoration for today. Uh, because Abraham and Sarah were promised by God that, well, Abraham was promised, that he would be the father of many nations, and that he would have uh, as many children as the, the numbers of stars in the sky. And Abraham was old. Abraham was very old, and he was promised that he would have children. And it didn't happen for many, many years. And finally, Sarah basically gives up and she says, well, maybe we'll have a child because Abraham will father a child by our, our servant, and that will be the child that God is talking about. And so he, she gives to Abraham Hagar. And of course, Hagar conceives and bears a son, Ishmael. But the Lord saw that and he said, no, I promised you, you would have a child. And Sarah, it says, even laughs within herself. She laughs. How is this going to be possible? Because, like I said, she was old. By the time they had a child, Abraham was 100 years old and Sarah was not far behind. So you might imagine why she might have laughed a little bit when God told her that she was going to have a child. But she did. She has Isaac. Abraham and Sarah have Isaac. But the next generation, we get to Jacob. Isaac and Rebekah have Jacob. And Jacob is really the one that it seems like he's the fulfillment of the promise that God gave to his grandparents, to Abraham and Sarah, that uh, they would be, they would be the father of a multitude of nations. Because Jacob has 12 sons, and those 12 sons become the, the fathers of the 12 tribes of Israel. And in fact, Jacob's name is even changed to Israel in the scripture after that great encounter that uh, Jacob has where he actually wrestles with the angel of the Lord. And after wrestling with the angel of the Lord, he's, his name is changed from Jacob to Israel, which means God prevails. God is victorious. So the barren one's grandson becomes the father of a multitude of many nations and shows us that God prevails. Keep that in mind. Because today, we are celebrating in the church the dormition, the repose, the falling asleep, the death of Anna, of Joachim and Anna. And of course, if we know the story of Joachim and Anna, we can see that there are a few parallels between Abraham and Sarah and Joachim and Anna, a barren couple. The desolate one, as St. Paul called them in the uh, epistle this morning, which is why we read this epistle today to connect us to uh, uh, Joachim and Anna to Abraham and Sarah, because Joachim and Anna were also barren and without children, and they so desired to have children. And they prayed and prayed and prayed that the God would bless them with a child, just a child, boy, girl, it says they didn't, didn't care, a child. And it seemed to the people of Israel at that time that they were, uh, that Joachim and Anna were being somehow punished by God for not having a child. And in fact, the story is that Joachim goes to make his offering at the temple, and the offering is rejected. And so Joachim feels himself rejected, and he goes out into the wilderness to pray. And there as he is out in the wilderness, an angel comes to him and says, Joachim, go back to Anna. She will conceive and bear a child. And an angel comes also to Anna and says the same thing. And so Joachim and Anna come together, and of course, she does conceive... And she gives birth to Mary. Now, Joachim and Anna were not as old as Abraham and Sarah when they had a little Mary uh, in their late 60s, early 70s. The tradition is that Anna died at the age of 79 and that uh, Mary had lost both of her parents by the time she was 11, is what the Synaxarian says. So perhaps she was 68 or so when she, had, uh, when she gave birth to Mary. The desolate one gives birth to a child who then gives birth to a child who really shows that God prevails. 
even bigger than Israel, even bigger than Jacob, that God prevails and that God is victorious. So the, the grandson of the desolate one, Sarah, is the birth of the 12 tribes of Israel, and the grandson of the desolate one, Anna, is the birth of the church, is the birth of the entry into the kingdom of heaven. And so while there are parallels between Abraham and Sarah and Joachim and Anna, it is far more transcendent for us to think about the great miracle that occurs in the generations of Joachim and Anna than even that of Abraham and Sarah. And for us to even remember and think about and realize that when God made the promise to Abraham, that he'd be the father of many nations, he actually saw not Isaac, not Jacob, not all of those sons, but all the way down to the birth of Christ our God into the world. He saw the incarnation and that as the place where the promise that was made to Abraham would be fulfilled. Because Anna, after all, was of one of those tribes of, of Israel. She was of the tribe of Levi, so she was genetically connected to all of those folks. But the real fulfillment of the promise is in Christ our God. And so, brothers and sisters, what do we have to gain and learn and know from that? Well, back in the days of Abraham and Sarah and Jacob and all of the tribes, they were seeking after the promised land, a specific geographical place of land that the Lord had promised to give to them. Well, here in our world, as we are, are connected and united to Christ, the grandson of Anna, literally, I mean, think about that, the grandson of Anna, her flesh passed to Mary, passed to Christ our true God, Christ our God, the grandson of Anna, we are not seeking after some specific geographical place that we can find on this earth, but we are seeking instead the promised land of the kingdom of heaven. And so it is much greater than just picking up and potentially moving to some place in the world and thinking that we found that place that God gave us. In fact, you don't have to go any further than this room to realize and see that this is what God has given us in the kingdom of heaven. And so that transcendence of not just going for a promised space, but to the promised land, which is the kingdom of heaven. And further beyond that, Abraham and Sarah, they were thinking that the father of many nations, that it would be so many children genetically born and blood relatives connected to one another. Well, that's not the case in the grandson of Anna. Because in the grandson of Anna, we don't have to be blood related. We don't have to be part of a specific tribe. We have to choose Christ and therefore ourselves be adopted into the family of Christ. And when we are adopted into the family of Christ, we are the church, which is itself the body of Christ. And so we ourselves, not just Christ, but we ourselves can be thought of as the grandchildren of Anna. And so the children of the desolate one, Anna, far outnumbers anything we could ever imagine because of the work of God and the incarnation. It's amazing to think about how God works. And the fact that he gave us Abraham and Sarah and their example in the scriptures so that when we get to Joachim and Anna, we can see the work of God and know how he can and does work in this world. And how he provides for us the, the way to the kingdom of heaven. And the challenge for us always, brothers and sisters, is that the choice is always ours. The choice is ours. There were those that were just born into the people of Israel and they were in the people. There were those that came in um, from the outside. Yes, that's true. But here we have the choice. We heard in the gospel this morning after Christ uh, cast out the demon into the herd of swine and they went away uh, in, off of the cliff into the water. The people of the town heard about it and they came to him and said, please leave. Leave our neighborhood. Get out of here. And so he left. And so, brothers and sisters, while we have the great knowledge that we ourselves are able to be adopted into the family of God, that we can have Joachim and Anna as our grandparents, we can have the mother of God as our, our mother, 
that we can uh, have the inheritance of the kingdom of heaven from God, our Father, who is the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ as well. The choice is ours. The choice is ours. And so as we think every single week, what is our choice? And so may we be encouraged by the work that God has done all the way from Abraham down to Joachim and Anna down to today. May we be encouraged by seeing that work and make the right choice. Make the choice to unite ourselves to the family of God. To be one of those children of the desolate. So that we can find not just a plot of land, but that we can find the kingdom of heaven. And that we can be united to Christ there. Brothers and sisters, may we always choose Christ, the child of the desolate one, who reveals to us that God prevails and that God is victorious, because in, in anything else, there is no victory. May we choose the family of God. May we choose Christ. Glory to the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen.